Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the 2021 Rolex Fastnet Race Briefing. I will be conducting this briefing on behalf of the Rourke Race Team. Chris Stone, the Rourke Racing Manager, sends his apologies. He's currently in Cherbourg, of all places. On behalf of the Royal Ocean Racing Club, I wish to thank everyone for their perseverance and patience throughout the year and in helping us make this event possible. As always, the event is nothing without the sailors participating. Given the past 18 months, the world hasn't always made sailing a priority or an option. The club and the event is even more thankful to have you participating with us. Thank you. The skipper's briefing will take the following format. I'm going to talk about fundamental rule three, outstanding documentation and administration, the start, the course and obstructions, reporting at the Fastnet Rock, the finish, berthing, media, and then followed on from my presentation will be a, a weather briefing by Chris Tibbs. So a reminder, fundamental rule three, decision to race. The responsibility for a boat's decision to participate in a race or to continue racing is hers alone. Outstanding documentation and administration. A reminder, please, all boats should double check crew numbers prior to starting. It is essential that we know who is on board your boat. Late changes are entirely possible. Please just let us know. On that note, all emergency contact details must be lodged in Sailgate. I do not want to be giving people any penalties. All trackers should be installed immediately as they've been collected. We will be monitoring those and letting you know if there's any problems. Onboard mobile and sat phone numbers should be checked in Sailgate and should also be checked periodically throughout the race in case we need to contact you, not just for your own benefit, but other competitors that may need help. That would be very much appreciated. Essential pre-start checklist. Please ensure that your AIS is switched on and working correctly. Ensure that your tracker is mounted and in the correct location. And probably given the weather forecast, ensuring that it's not going to be falling off would be uh, helpful as well. As we've said, ensure that all crew match the boat's sailgate account. And also please to uh, help with our checking text the number of persons on board to the listed text number on the sailing instructions as per SI 10.1. For the start, um, I'm sure you're all aware of the need to pass through the identity gates and display the, re the required sales, uh, etc. This is all listed in sailing instruction 11. There are three identity gates, the north gate at Reach, the middle gate at QXI, and the south gate, gate at Cows Corinthian. Again, all clearly detailed in the sailing instructions. Radio communications, sailing instruction 12. Please do listen out on VHF channel 28 for race committee announcements. If you need to contact the race committee for any reason, we will be listening on VHF channel 72. To confirm, there has been a minor amendment to clarify that the Figaro 3-1 design class, all boats in that class, that fleet, will start with IRC 1. The course and obstructions all obstructions noted are noted in Appendix A of the sailing instructions. A reminder, all TSS traffic se separation schemes within the course area will be monitored and do carry standard penalties if boats enter those zones. 
please do not enter those zones. Those zones are the Casquettes, off Land's End, south of the Scilly Isles, west of the Scilly Isles, and the Fastnet Rock. And also, on the return, the Casquettes again, on your way back. Please note that there are um, reported to be a number of lobster pots in the vicinity of Land's End and the Longship. Additional uh, obstructions, we also have the exclusion zone on Cow's waterfront. Hopefully you can see that on the screen. Um, again, I urge you to clearly read the sailing instructions to ensure you don't pass within that uh, area of boys just off uh, the Cow's Green. Again, carrying on with the course and obstructions, Penennis Head, all outlying rocks and islets within eight nautical miles of Penennis Head, Light, St Mary's in the Scilly Isles, must be avoided. Again, we will be monitoring and automatic penalties shall be applied to those entering that zone. Reporting at the Fastnet Rock, sailing instruction 18. Every boat shall record the time um, on the declaration form when the Fastnet light bears 180 degrees magnetic, and that shall be reported by text message or email to the Rort Race team. And also, upon finishing, uh, complete it in your declaration form, please. As I say, to confirm, this rock rounding time can be submitted by text message or by email. And the details, again, are given in the sailing instructions of where to send that. The finish, sailing instruction 23. Please could all boats from five miles out uh, listen out on VHF channel 72. Please be aware of commercial traffic um, as you uh, pass past uh, West and Grand Rad. Uh, it is a busy commercial port. Uh, please be aware of your obligations uh, under the uh, collision regs. Um, please note that any sound signals made at the finish are for aid only and do not constitute the finish line. The finish itself, the finish line runs 069 magnetic from Fort de Chamanac. Hopefully you can see that clearly on uh, the screen. On finishing, and please be aware, only when Ocean One is able to respond, please can competitors confirm their finish, and particularly if, if uh, we ask you to, on VHF Channel 72, and await any further instructions that we may need to give you. Port Chanterain berthing team will then be monitoring VHF channel 09 to uh, take you to your berth and advise on all berthing. Sherbrooke Harbour rules. Please note that there is a speed limit of eight knots in the Petite Rad. Um, to the east of the Grand Rad and the eastern past, um, please do sail outside the Grand Rad. Uh, VHF um, listening watch on channel 12 is mandatory in the limits of the Grand Rad and the Petite Rad. Do not hesitate to contact the harbour master on this channel should you need any further information. Immigration and regulations. Only vaccinated crew can currently enter France and the race village for UK and non-EU countries. Only non-vaccinated sailors from France and the EU will be allowed, but must undertake quick testing to be allowed into the village. Quick testing will be available periodically in the race village. Obviously, further updates may uh, occur. We will be communicating that to all competitors. 
immigration and regulations continued. Unvaccinated crews from the UK and non-EU countries can berth in Cherbourg, but must stay on their boats. All vaccinated crews and unvaccinated French or EU crew members must report to race control to undertake Finnish procedures and customs and immigration clearances. Proof of vaccination will be required at all times. The, the birthing, as, as I previously mentioned, uh, will be, uh, uh, further updates will be given over the VHF, um, but the race village is, is Port Chanterain Marina and the Bassin du Commerce. There is a 24-hour fuel service available at Port Chanterain Marina, the race village. After the finish, trackers and declarations should be returned as soon as possible to the race village in Cherbourg. I appreciate not everyone may be stopping, in which case please do return the declarations and the trackers as soon as possible. Should you have any queries, do please contact the race team. A reminder that it is a requirement that all crew need to sign the declaration form. Um, we will also, as I say, offer alternate tracker and declaration returns in cows and potentially the handball. So please, should you have any queries, do contact us. The Cows Clubhouse, for those unable to stop in uh, Cherbourg, will be open 24 hours from Wednesday the 4th. Uh, not the 4th. <laughs> um, and also returns at HYS. Um, media, please, please do let us know how you're sailing, how you're getting on, and photos, videos, and other content can be sent to the team via the WhatsApp number listed on the screen. Please share your story on social media channels and alert the Rourke the media team by using the only hashtag, hashtag Rolex Fastnet Race. That concludes my briefing. Thank you very much. <laughs> no, it doesn't conclude my briefing. I've just been told there will be an amendment to the start times. This is due to uh, safety reasons. And in light of the forecast, the start times have been amended as follows. The first start will be the multi-hulls, as originally planned. The second start will be the uh, Mocha and Class 40s. The third start, IRC zero. The fourth start, IRC one, and as previously explained, including Figaro threes. The next start will be IRC four. The next start, IRC three. And finally, IRC two. That will be communicated to all competitors shortly by email and also available on the Rourke and official websites. I'd like to hand you over to uh, Chris Tibbs for the weather briefing, and then we'll follow on with any questions afterwards. Thank you. OK, uh, thanks, Tim. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name's Chris Tibbs. I'm a meteorologist and I'm a sailor. And uh, I have done the fast net a couple of times, so I do know what you're all in for. So the weather's been quite strange the last few days. And uh, from this satellite picture, you can see this was taken this morning just to the west of uh, Cows. There's a big band of cloud. Well, that's what we've been having this afternoon with the intermittent showers. And this is all courtesy of this rather large area of low pressure that seems to be uh, anchored over Scotland. It is very slow moving. It is, though, now beginning to move 
across Scotland into the North Sea. And from tomorrow, late tomorrow, it will be starting to fill. <coughs> and the reason why we've got this, this low pressure sitting over Scotland is our friend the jet stream. We would normally expect the jet stream at this time of year to come across the Atlantic and go to the north of Scotland, whereas we can see from here, uh, from this slide, that the jet stream is going passing to the south of the UK. And the low up to the north of Scotland or over Scotland is rather cut off from the, from the jet stream, so it's only very slow moving. And that's why it's been interfering with the weather for the last three or four days. Now, if we look for tomorrow night, we can see that um, the low is now northeast Scotland, just moving into the North Sea, and it has slowly filled. It's filled, filling tomorrow probably about eight millibars. But this is still showing quite a tight pressure gradient through the English Channel. And it's only tomorrow evening and overnight that we're going to start seeing an ease in the pressure gradient and the wind beginning to ease as well. So we look for midday on Monday. We can see there that the, the isobars are beginning to open. On this particular chart, it's showing the remains of a cold front at around Land's End and the possibility of a secondary low forming to the south of Land's End. I don't really think that that will happen, but what we will get is the further west you get, the lighter the wind will be. And as we roll into Tuesday, we can see to the south, there's a small area of higher pressure, and this is putting a, pushing a ridge into the Irish Sea. So once we get past Land's End, the wind will ease, and there will be a tendency for the wind to veer a few degrees, then it will back again. And what it's backing ahead of is the frontal systems coming towards Ireland. We'll look at that a little bit more in a moment. And then if we go through to Thursday, uh, sorry, to Wednesday, we can see that this green area to the west of Ireland is an area of low pressure. And that low pressure is moving, but it's slow moving. Again, it's been cut off from the jet stream. So there is some uncertainty into just where that low pressure will move to and how fast it will move. I put a series of grid files up now because I know most of you will have been looking at grid files, if not everybody. And this is for tomorrow afternoon. We can see out in the channel, we've got around about 25 knots, 23 to 28 knots in the channel. There will be some funneling through, uh, through by the Needles and Hearst Castle. So although while we're expecting 23 to 28 knots as a general background wind, I think at times we will see 25 to 30. Now, tomorrow morning particularly, we will see some fairly heavy showers and some big squalls with those showers, but that should be easing towards the end of the morning and into the afternoon, we're expecting to be a lot less shower activity. Then if we look through to tomorrow night, we can see that the wind has eased a little bit. Grid files are showing 20 to 25 knots by midnight, um, I think that might be, might be uh, pretty accurate when you're away from the land, close to the coast, around headlands. I think you will see more as the wind is accelerated around the headlands. If we can continue through to midday on Monday, we can see to the west that we're beginning to see an easing in the wind probably only down to 20 to 25 knots, but then easing 18 to 23. And by late in the day on, mon on Monday, early Tuesday, we're seeing it a lot lighter, particularly once you're past start point. We're also beginning to see from this slide 
the, the ridge of high pressure pushing into the Irish Sea. And by midday Tuesday, that will have pushed in. And we will see that for those of you on the western side of the Irish Sea, you will start to get the wind to back as it's moving round to the southwest and then south to southwest ahead of the next front. Now, this next front, which I've circled in red, there is a quite a big difference between the different models just when it will arrive at the fast net. I think uh, it's been slowing down over the last 24, 36 hours, so we'll probably get to the fast net early on Wednesday morning. When it does get to the fast net, there will be a veer in the wind much more round to the west. That one is for uh, Wednesday. It's showing the front stalled near the fast net. There is, uh, as I say before, there's quite a lot of uncertainty at the timing of this front. If it does stall, as this is model is indicating, then you're leaving the fast net, it still will be a southerly wind. For the boats that are a little bit later, it'll be a westerly. We're also seeing higher pressure over near Cherbourg. So for the very large boats, the fast boats, if you've got round the rock and are heading back, it is, will be lighter in the English Channel. However, by, by Thursday, expecting southwesterly winds to cover the whole of the race course, and it will increase into Friday, but this does depend rather just what happens to that low uh, to the west of Ireland. And then Saturday, still showing westerly winds. So once you're round the fast net, back in towards the channel, westerly winds, southwesterly winds. So I just made a few quick notes. I, uh, I know you can all read, so I'll try not to just repeat what I've written up on the, on the, on the screen there. But there will be strong southwesterly winds at the start. I am thinking 23 to 28 knots, but it could be stronger, particularly at the western Solent, and if we get any heavy showers. Now, most of the squalls will be in the morning, and there is a chance, it's a fairly low chance, of thunder tomorrow morning. Uh, but it's not going to be until tomorrow, tomorrow night that we start to see the ease in the wind and significant easing in the wind early Monday. As a general rule, we would say that gusts are likely to be a third as high again as your average wind speed. And my main concern really with the forecast is tomorrow afternoon and tomorrow night is that when we've got wind against tide, we're going to get a very short and steep sea. And I think where on the chart it's shown where there are overfalls, the, the sea conditions will be quite extreme there. As I mentioned before, the timing of the front, whether it's late, late on Tuesday or more, like, more into Wednesday morning or even mid-Wednesday morning, is going to be quite critical for your route away from the rock. And well worth getting weather information on the way to see the, how that's evolving. So the things to me when I was looking at the forecast that come out to me is that tomorrow afternoon, tomorrow night is going to be a tough, a tough night. And I always reckon that you don't usually win a race on the first night, but you can certainly lose it. And I am concerned that you're going to get a fairly unpleasant sea state around the areas, around by the bridge going out of the Needles, St Albans Ledge, and particularly um, Portland, Portland race. We're going to see fairly good visibility, uh, probably all the way to the rock, except in rain showers. But ahead of that cold front, there will be a reduction in visibility, um, as you would expect. I'll just wait for the lorry to go by. Oh, 
Oh. It's a bit, bit slow going by. You may get some poor visibility near the fast net ahead of that cold front. Uh, possibility of thunder is slow tomorrow and uh, really I think is important to try and get enough information on the route for when you're getting to the fast net at the timing of the front. Now I took a picture this morning out of my office window and a uh, very nice picture it was as well. Uh, out practicing in the, in the weather we had this morning. No wonder they're one of the favorites for the race. Thank you very much and I'll now hand back to Tim. Um, I'd now like to uh, open up for any, any questions. I have with me Tom Rinder, chairman of the jury, international jury, and hopefully hiding around the corner, Steve Cole from the Rort race team. Uh, please, uh, as I say, welcome any questions uh, anyone may have. Yes, sir. Uh, the question is, can we confirm the start times now that they've changed? Uh, bear with me one second, please. Thank you for your question. I can confirm the revised start time will be as follows. First start, multi-hull, warning signal, 1100 hours, uh, with a start at 11.10. Second start will be the Amoka 60 and class 40s, with a warning signal at 11.15 and a start at 11.25. The next start will be IRC 0, with their warning signal at 11.30, and the start at 11.40. The next start will be IRC 1, and all of the Figaro 3s, with a warning signal at 11.45 and a start at 11.55. Following on, we will have IRC 4, their warning signal at 1,200 hours, and the start at 12.10. The next start will be IRC 3, with a warning signal at 12.15, and the start at 12.25. The final start is IRC 2 with a warning signal at 12.30 and the start at 12.40. I hope that's clear. We will be sending that to all competitors and it will be published on the website. Are there any other questions, please? Uh, yes. Can we arrange? Uh, can we arrange for that? I think the question was, could we show the obstructions again around the Silly Isles? Thank you. I'm not sure whether that's possible, but I'll wait and see. Uh, <laughs> does, does anyone know if that's possible? But is it possible to display on the screen? Um, yeah. Okay, are there any particular questions around that? <laughs> sure. Yep. No, thank you. Uh, the question is, is that uh, a radius of eight miles or is it all the way around? Um, I think we will clarify that. Um, it's probably the best thing to do. I will uh, check on that and we'll, we'll issue a clarification to that question. Thank you for the question. Um, I think we will probably put that, post that as a question and answer on the website and hopefully everyone is happy with that. Tom, yes, please. Uh, 
Uh, it is my understanding that, yes, all boats, I believe, uh, should be able to stop to pick up fuel on the assumption that you don't then uh, leave, leave the boat. Any other questions? Yes. Uh, yes. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, apologies. Yes, to, to confirm, the, the question was the uh, with the amendment to the starting times. The question was, will the the class flag stay the same? Yes. I believe all, all, everything else will, will remain the same, but it will be clearly published in the, uh, the, the amendments, as I say, and issued to all competitors and on the website. Any further questions? So all, all that remains, please do feel free to come up if you have any other questions you'd like to talk to us in person, but it remains to say, have a, a fantastic race. I do very much hope to see as many of you as possible uh, after the finish in Cherbourg. Apologies to those that either may not be able to stop or feel it's inappropriate to stop. I wish you well. Uh, good luck and fair winds. Thank you very much.